Hello Everage Anglers, we're here today at Cabri Angling, which is a, um, a fish and tackle shop that's based at Acorn Fishery in Kingston Seymour, just outside Clevedon. And we're here today to have a little chat of the, to the owner, her name's uh, Zoe Bartlett, and I'm just going to literally spin the camera now, around now. And... Right Zoe, can you start by telling us a little bit about, a bit of history about the uh, fishery and, and the tackle shop and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, we own obviously Acorn Fishery and it's a family run business, we actually dug it ourselves, um, did the whole lot uh, 22 years ago now. Um, we have a carp lake and we have a match lake and um, I was brought into the fishing world uh, with my brother. Um, our family have always fished. Um, we used to go with Gramps and we used to love tench fishing down, down all over the place. Um, and my dad always fished. Um, and then with my brother's fishing career, um, we went all over the world um, and I got into carp fishing myself um, and I was actually I was junior champion and woman champion ended up doing more horsey things and then we with the fishing lakes and stuff we've sort of taken over the reins from mum and dad a bit more so it's it's dominating me and my brother Mark um, as you probably know Mark is a carp angler and he does do much fishing as well um, and so then with the shop, we had uh, some guys that had it before, um, Dan and Toby, um, they've had it for how many years? Did they have it? I don't know, they had it before it was even here, didn't oh, they? I, I don't know sure. exactly. Many, many, many years. years. They established um, it, didn't they? And Dan wanted to retire. So me and my brother, we both had the idea of, we wanted to do this sort of tackle shop thing. We, we felt that, you know, the, the fishery was developing quite nicely and, and the more and more people we were getting, we knew that there was a demand for more tackle. Um, and obviously Dan wanted to downsize a little bit more. So it was kind of, we knew that that was somewhere we, we knew what we wanted to do and go into partnership and yeah, venture into the world of tackle trade. <laughs> um, How have you found that? Uh, has there been on much of a learning curve with um with fish and tackle, I mean, obviously, Massive. with a background in carp fishing, you obviously knew a fair bit about carp fishing tackle. And um, what about other aspects of fishing, like um, match fishing, course fishing, uh, you know, even pike and pike fishing, and that? Have you had you been on much of a learning curve recently? Well, so obviously, I, I knew I had a background of carp fishing. Um, obviously, my brother doing all of that, he taught me all of that. Um, but going into the tackle trade. Um, a great friend of ours, Des uh, Ship, he enlightened me to the fact that I need to learn to carp, uh, to match fish, uh, and he said, you know, to be able to just to, to sell anything and and to be able to help people when they come in, um, you need to learn to match fish. So that was the so new when did target. that when did that uh, journey begin? When did you get? When how long has it been since you sort of started? Um, you first doing a few matches. Um, well, it was mainly COVID that actually pushed me into it. Right. Um, it was mainly because horse shows were actually off. Um, yeah. And so I couldn't really go anywhere. And obviously having fish in my back, back garden, it was quite nice. Um, and so it was, so from, yeah, it was around August 2020 that I decided that I was going to give it a go. And, uh, and Des has been my coach. He drew the short straw, although he didn't actually know I was lefty. So um, that changed the massive concept of uh, of match fishing for him. Um, and have and you uh, uh, any successes? I mean, you've been you've, to be fair. I've seen you fishing, and you've you've gone straight in at like open match level. You've not like joined a club and done club fishing. You've gone straight in at quite a high level. Have you uh, had any successes? Any victories or results or pickups and money? I've, I've, yeah, surprisingly, um, I. When we, when we first sort of talked about the match fishing thing, I, I did say to Des, you know, look, if it's a complete non-starter, just tell me. And he was like, so I think you're going to be all right. And <laughs> that was literally it. And he was like, God help me. Um, 
So he, we, we, we literally had a, a couple of coaching sessions and I did a match. Yeah. And um, I was a bit of a joke actually was, was you know, what it was. And it was a, a guy called Charlie, uh, Charlie Barnes, who most people know anyway. Um, sadly, we lost it him. It was his memorial match, ago. wasn't it? If I remember the Charlie Barnes memorial match, yeah. Yeah, so it was the silvers only. And um, and I won, there was 30 anglers on, um, and I beat Des too. So you must have thought this match fishing game's easy. Well, I, I thought it was a bit of a doddle, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I thought, but uh, to be honest, even when I used to go into Dan's shop, obviously I knew the carp side, but the match side, you only had to look on the wall and you think, what earth is all this gear? Yep. Um, and and I knew myself that I, I can't I can't help anybody that comes in if if I don't know what a a, a rig is or you know yeah. and all those sort of things. So obviously a background of carping did help. You know I know the concept of things, but it's quite a mind game in a, in a lot of it. Um, so and as you know, Des has been great help and has really sort of helped me yeah. to understand it in basic forms um, and and it's kind of progressed and then I absolutely love match fishing now so I'm fully converted. <laughs> fully converted to the dark side or to the light side depending yeah, on how you look at it. Yeah, not sure. <laughs> so, um, so yeah and so then obviously then we got into you know it was it was definite that we were going to take on the tackle shop so that's that's where we've gone. Yeah. And I so as a, as a customer of I was a customer before you owned the shop, uh, when Dan owned the shop, and it was, and you have actually slightly relocated it. It's obviously still on the same site here at uh, Acorn Fishery, but you've moved it to a, a newer location, a new building. Uh, you've definitely got more room and more stock. Yep. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a bigger, more serious setup, I would say, than it was previously for anybody who hasn't been to the fishery recently. Um, have you got plans to, for, for it to move from here, or is this... Is this how it's going to stay? What any any ideas where you want to take it? Well, we only want to get bigger, really. Um, <laughs> for the demand of is, you know, we've, we've kind of gone with what we we know that is is needed, not only for our like for our fishery, but obviously we've got you know plantations bullocks down the road. Yeah, and um, none of them have got tackle uh, shops, have they? No. No, and so you know we don't just facilitate for you know obviously we have barbless hooks and stuff like that, but we do barbs just for example and yeah we know, do have a lot of the river can and we have a river can and other natural venues in the area as well don't you which yeah. a lot of the locals fish fish for so yeah so you cater in you, you basically becoming a local tackle shop which you know like yeah. you are my local tackle shop you know that, so you, essentially that's what you are yeah and so it's but it's just handy that you know it goes part and parcel with with the lakes that there's nothing worse than when you're on the bank and you break something and you have to pack up because you can't get it whereas you know i'd like to think we've got most areas covered um you know with within both sections um and you know we, we try to have a really big variety of stuff um you know we try and listen to what the anglers want and if we can get it in we'll get it in and you know i can normally try and source something so um yeah we will we are hoping to um push back i've just got to uh try and are you going to move that air, that sort of storage? What you're using there as a storage area? You're hoping to open yeah, it up so or buy it? Yeah, obviously we have our storage. Just I don't know if you, on the camera, guys, it's around just here where my finger is. So we're talking about there's a little storage space area there at the moment, and Zoe's plan planning by the sounds of it to open that up to a bit more. Uh, well, it'll actually be another bay. It'll, so it'll be another another bay back. What as big um, as this shot or the whole shop? It'll be um, so like another section like this. All oh, right, so, so past that wall. Yep. Yeah, so then wow. we can have okay. like you know potentially. We'd more big love to have like a pole alley and stuff oh, that like that so um and not only that for you know for the carpers you know, we'd like a, a big rod rod section and bivvies and well, that's really big plans so, yeah um, yeah obviously we're yeah up. that's where we're where we're hoping to go from so zoe have you um had good support from the local lads in the area yeah really good um a lot of the the lads that you know fish at all the local matches and stuff um really nice response and they've been really encouraging it's, it's been really really lovely um we've we've noticed a, a, a big increase of previous customers that might have you know gone up in bits that they've they've all come back 
Um, so, yeah, so when Dan owned the shop before, you, you've managed to, to um, keep his customers and grow some of your own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and get some more trade. Why do, you, why do you think more people are using, perhaps using the tackle shop now than were using it before? Um, I think there's, because we have expanded, we have to look at the range of Sonia that we, <laughs> we yeah. even have here, um, that um, we have expanded, you know, it didn't have to, the space to do it before yeah. um so that was a, a massive thing um which we have been able to you know we're lucky to have a bigger space area now yeah um but we've already noticed just even bait wise um we have a massive range of um live bait maggots casters worms all those pinkies bloody da um and we do keep, have some frozen baits as well you're um, keeping them in stock all the time for the for the, yeah. for the regulars and yeah, for people that are passing by like you say We've, yeah, we get a lot more of the passing trade. Um, you know, we open early, so we open at half seven in the morning. Um, it's half seven till five every day, um, well, Monday to Saturday, and then half seven till half twelve on a Sunday. So, you know, people pick it up on their on their route through on the day of fishing. Um, you know, a lot of the match lads, they, you know, they pop in first thing before the yeah, match is on, I mean, it is only sort of five or ten minutes off the M5, isn't it? And actually... If you come off the M5, it's very unlikely to hit traffic getting here because it's sort of quiet yeah. roads. So you can literally jump off the M5. Oh, sorry, I'm kicking your shop back. Jump off the M5 and uh, pop into the, the shop, no problem at all, and be back on the M5 in sort of 10 minutes, which I think is quite quite useful because the M5 corridor has got quite a lot of fisheries Yeah. that people might be up and down. And if they're, if they're halfway down the M5 and they think I haven't got any bait or whatever, they can pop in Yeah. and know that you're going to have a pint of maggots for them or, like you say, a kilo of worms or whatever they need to... Yeah, we, have, we, we try and to stock as, as much live bait as possible. I'm, I'm pretty, as a lot of people know, I'm pretty good at um, spending. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, much to my brother's disgust, um, he just goes, how much? <laughs> um, the delivery man, yeah, we're, we're good friends. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've, we've, we seem to be getting a really nice response and we can hope that, you know, as I say, we, we try to listen as much as possible and and we try to we, we just want to develop as much as possible really cool. see where it goes 